Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the best stocks to buy as well as the latest stock market news updates that investors need to know about. With that being said, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these stories, and with that being said, let's get right into it. If you've paid attention to the market recently, you would know that the three major indexes, which would be the NASDAQ, the SP500, and the Dow Jones, have recently closed lower. The main reason for this is due to several hotter than expected inflation reports that have lowered the hype for the Federal Reserve lowering interest rates. The reason why this is relevant is because if the Fed does cut interest rates, this will act as a positive catalyst, thus lifting the stock market indexes. On top of that, we also have other negative macroeconomic news, considering that airlines such as Southwest have decreased in their share price by around 18% last week because they are struggling with the whole Boeing situation. Essentially, Boeing's safety problem problems are forcing various airlines to cut back on routes, and this is going to impact their top and bottom line for these various airlines. However, airlines are also facing other types of challenges, which would include reduced leisure demand and higher fuel costs. Now, in my opinion, I'm actually using this as an opportunity to buy into airline stocks right now at a cheap price point, but always make sure to do your own research before you make any investment decision. Next up, let's talk about Elon Musk and his company named SpaceX. The reason we're talking about SpaceX, even though they are not not publicly traded on the stock market is because good news for SpaceX sometimes reflects positively on other companies which are publicly traded and are owned by Elon Musk, such as Tesla. The reason why SpaceX is in the news is because they are planning to build a spy network of hundreds of star shield satellites for the National Reconnaissance Office. These are going to be low Earth orbit satellites, which are going to support ground forces, and it's going to enhance the ability of the United States to locate targets globally. Overall, this is very good news for SpaceX. SpaceX, considering that SpaceX is trying to actively combat various moves made by China and Russia. As an example, China announced plans earlier this month to create its own constellation of low orbit satellites to compete with Starlink. On top of that, Russia is developing a nuclear space weapon capable of destroying satellites. So the United States is going to use SpaceX and their technology to combat these various updates and innovation from China and Russia. Ultimately, this will reflect positively for Elon Musk and his people are, and this should increase the share price of Tesla in some way or another. Next up, let's talk about Reddit, which will become the first social media platform since Pinterest to go public on the public stock market since 2019. Reddit is a social media company whose ticker symbol is RDDT, and this company is going to launch at a valuation of $6.4 billion. Now, what's interesting about this initial public offering is that there is a unique caveat, considering that a chunk of exclusive IPO stock will be set aside for the platform's most loyal users. However, the bad news is that many Reddit users are actually very bearish about this IPO, and they have expressed interest in shorting this stock, which means the IPO and the share price of this company could plummet dramatically. Next up in macroeconomic news, let's talk more about the Federal Reserve meeting, which will wrap up on Wednesday. And this is going to give investors insight onto whether or not the Federal Reserve plans to hold interest rates steady or decrease them, which should act as a positive catalyst for the general stock market. For me personally, I do not think that the Fed will lower interest rates this week, but I do think they will eventually lower interest rates throughout the remainder of this year, and this could happen two to three times. Therefore, investors should pay attention to these upcoming catalysts, because literally it's only a matter of time before this comes through to fruition. Next up in macroeconomic news, before we get into the best stocks to buy and individual stock analysis, let's talk about some AI news. Recently, the European Union approved for their first ever comprehensive AI law to place guardrails around the explosive technology surrounding artificial intelligence. These various laws are anticipated to go into effect as soon as May. And if any companies break these laws, including United States tech giants, they could be fined up to 7% of their annual revenue, which is going to be a huge problem for a lot of companies. In my personal opinion, Opinion, these laws are nothing to worry about and they will not impact the current momentum that we are seeing in the general stock market surrounding artificial intelligence. These laws essentially just go over how AI generated content will need to be labeled. Therefore, this should prevent some misinformation regarding deep fakes and various AI generated content. But overall, this is neither positive nor negative in regards to artificial intelligence momentum. But earlier, we did briefly talk about Boeing and airlines and I really want to bring this point home because I personally am buying airline stocks right now. If you've been following our news updates, 
States, you know that Boeing has had a plethora of various negative hit pieces come out against them. This clearly has caused Boeing's BA shares to drop dramatically. However, this is not only affecting Boeing, because it is also affecting various airlines, such as Delta, United Airlines, and Southwest, among a few others. Regarding the newly reported problems with some of Boeing's aircrafts, the FAA has paused certification for Boeing's newest 737, which is the MAX 10. This delay is costing Boeing a lot of money on top of airlines because Boeing needs to deliver these aircrafts to these airlines so they can continuously make money. Right now, Delta Airlines anticipates that the deliveries of the MAX 10 will be delayed until 2027, which is a huge problem for airlines. As an example, Southwest Airlines exclusively use the 737 lineup from Boeing. So if Boeing cannot deliver these 737s to Southwest, that means Southwest will have to cut or delay various flights. On top of that, United Airlines actually asked Boeing to stop building the MAX 10s that they ordered, and this is actually very good news for Boeing's rival named Airbus. Overall, in my opinion, this is just going to be a short-term hiccup for Boeing and these airlines, which is why I personally am nibbling at all of these companies right now as their share prices fall, because eventually their share prices will rebound. You just have to have a long-term investment outlook on these companies and use this as a buying opportunity, but always make sure to do your own research before you make any investment decision. Now let's talk about the best stocks to buy regarding our single stock analysis in regards to Tesla, which is an electric vehicle manufacturing company, which also specializes in energy storage, energy generation, as well as artificial intelligence. Tesla, ticker symbol TSLA, is actually increasing the prices of various models of their electric vehicles. The company will specifically increase the price of all their Model Y trims in the United States by $1,000 as soon as next month. On top of that, the company also plans to increase their Model Y prices over in Europe by as much as $2,100 per vehicle. The reason for these price increases is because originally Tesla cut the prices of their electric vehicles to foster demand. However, that strategy did not seem to work very well. Analysts argued that the strategy is not helping demand and it's actually hurting the company. So Tesla has now done a reversal by increasing the prices of their electric vehicles. By increasing the prices of their vehicles, this should reflect very positively on Tesla's margins. And essentially, Tesla is saying to buy vehicles right now before these price increases actually take effect. However, there is some bad news here because according to Wall Street, they believe Tesla will bring in a delivery miss for quarter one to where they will only deliver around 487,000 units according to FactSet. But it seems that investors are overlooking this negative piece of news because the company is currently up by around 5% right now to where they are trading at $171.73 for their TSA. Tesla share price. For me personally, I am buying Tesla shares right now because I do believe they will rebound in their share price in the future, but I'd love to hear your thoughts about Tesla down below. Next, let's talk about some Palantir news, ticker symbol PLTR, and this company is a big data and analytics company which serves both commercial enterprises as well as government agencies. The reason why Palantir is in the news is because DNB Asset Management, AS, recently increased their position in Palantir by buying more shares. Essentially, this company bought 6,815 shares to where now the company owns a stock worth $5 million five hundred and sixty eight thousand dollars according to their most recent filing with the SEC. Overall, this is pretty good news for Palantir Technologies and I'd love to hear your thoughts about Palantir down below in the comments. If you didn't know, I personally hold Palantir Technologies in my portfolio and I'm very excited to see what this company could make of themselves in the future. Next up, let's talk about how Apple, which is a huge technology company, is currently in discussions to allow Google's AI tool named Gemini to power their iPhone AI features in the future. So let's talk about it. Essentially, Apple wants to use Google's AI prowess to become a part of the iPhone software as soon as 2024, which is the year that we are in right now. However, you should be aware that Apple is also in talks with Microsoft, considering that Microsoft is a huge backer of OpenAI, which is the parent company of ChatGPT. As of right now, Apple is preparing for these new AI capabilities to be a part of their iPhone's upcoming operating system update, which would be the iOS 18. Now, you should be aware that either the deal with Google or a potential deal with Microsoft will not be announced until sometime around June. For me personally, as well as a very prestigious prestigious analyst from Wedbush named Daniel Ives believes that Google will be integrated into Apple's ecosystem to where Daniel Ives says this. And he says, this is a major win for Google to get into the Apple ecosystem and have access to the golden installed base of a Cupertino with clearly a major license fee attached to this. Essentially, he's saying by Google integrating themselves into Apple's ecosystem, this will reflect very positively on Google's brand as well as their general share price. And I completely agree with him. And I would love to hear 
your thoughts down below about this amazing story regarding these technology giants. You should also be aware that I personally own Apple, Google, and Microsoft in my personal portfolio, but again, always make sure to do your own research to determine whether or not these are good investment opportunities for you personally. Now let's move on to talk about Fisker. Fisker is a startup electric vehicle company that has really been feeling it lately considering their shares have dropped by around 12%, and this is mainly due to bankruptcy scares. Fisker recently said that they are going to pause production on their electric vehicles for up to six weeks, and they plan to raise $150 million in funding by selling convertible notes. On top of that, you should know that Fisker is in talks with a large automaker for a potential transaction, but this large automaker was not named by Fisker. Many investors believe that this could potentially be referring to Nissan, considering that a Reuters report actually said that Fisker is in advanced talks with Nissan. As of right now, it seems that Nissan wants to invest into Fisker in a deal that could act as a financial lifeline for this company, considering that they have already hired people and advisors to assist them in a possible bankruptcy filing. And for context, I personally am not invested into this company because I believe there are far superior electric vehicle companies that investors should be investing into. But that is just my personal opinion because I would love to hear your thoughts down below in the comments about Fisker and whether or not you personally hold this company in your portfolio. Speaking about electric vehicle companies, let's quickly go over the latest news updates for NIO, which is an electric vehicle maker located over in China. NIO is a Chinese premium electric vehicle company, and they recently said that they plan to reveal its mass market brand in May. Therefore, investors are looking forward to this. However, NIO is not the most fundamentally strong company considering their financials, but if this company survives, they could end up paying off a big time for investors. However, you should be aware that this is a foreign company, which means that there is a lot of risk if you decide to invest in this company, just from a geopolitical perspective. You should also be aware that NIO also makes phones, because because the Neo Phone Generation 2 has completed development according to Neo's CEO. Therefore, this phone should now enter the manufacturing phase, which should act as somewhat of a buffer for this company's top of the line growth. However, the best piece of news for Neo, in my opinion, is that Neo and CATL have recently entered into an amazing partnership regarding battery evolution. For context, CATL is a huge battery producer and they have contracts with both Neo and Tesla. Therefore, this will allow Neo to compete with other major automakers such as Tesla in some regards, especially in regards to their batteries. Overall, I would say these are positive news updates for NEO, but NEO is still an extremely risky company, so please always make sure to do your own research. Next up in the news, you should know that Cisco Systems recently completed their Splunk acquisition, which is great news. Cisco, ticker symbol CSCO, recently completed their $28 billion acquisition of Splunk, ticker symbol SPLK. Therefore, Splunk will no longer trade on the NASDAQ under that ticker symbol because they are officially being acquired. Overall, this is great news, and I personally hold Cisco in my portfolio, so I'd love to hear whether or not you personally hold Splunk or Cisco in your portfolio, so feel free to sound off in the comments down below. Next up, let's talk about one of my favorite stocks named Super Microcomputer, which is paid us handsomely over the last year, and recently they joined the SP500. Super Microcomputer has very close ties to both Nvidia as well as AMD, and they normally launch their products faster than their rivals such as Dell and Hewitt Packard Enterprise. Analysts and industry experts even recently said that the company has historically been among the first to receive artificial intelligence chips from Nvidia and advanced micro devices as it helps them check server prototypes, giving it a head start over their rivals. This is just one of the many reasons why Supermicro shares have skyrocketed by around 289% so far this year alone. On top of that, another analyst even said, and I quote, that Supermicro has developed a model that is very, very quick to market. They usually have the widest portfolio of products when a new product comes out from Nvidia or AMD or Intel. Overall, Supermicro has a great competitive advantage considering their very quick product to market strategy and their relationships with Intel, Nvidia, as well as AMD. Supermicro is also a huge artificial intelligence play that should be in many people's portfolios. However, there is a risk here, and here's what it is. Supermicro's share price has undergone massive rallies to where now they are trading at 40 times their expected earnings, which is a far cry considering what they traded at last December, considering that their PE was just 15 at that time. So right now, they are rather expensive. Therefore, if Supermicro fails to meet any investor expectations over the next few quarters, this could be catastrophic for their share price. But in the meantime, I would say that this company
company is rather fundamentally solid, so I would love to hear your thoughts about this company down below in the comments. Lastly, let's talk about the biggest losers that you need to be avoiding right now, and the first one would be Shift for Payments, ticker symbol F-O-U-R, ticker name 4, which recently dropped by 10% in their share price, and here's why. Recently, the CEO informed employees via a memo that buyout offers undervalued the company, and even though these offers exceeded the current share price, the board deemed them insufficient, and this is clearly acting as a negative catalyst for this company. Therefore, companies who want to buy out this company are lowballing them and undervaluing them on purpose so they get a good deal, and the CEO essentially just said, no, we are not selling at that price. Overall, this just adds to the uncertainty surrounding this stock. But now let's move on to B. Riley Financial, ticker symbol R-I-L-Y, ticker name Riley. This company recently plunged by 11% in their share price after this investment bank failed to file its audited annual report following the end of an extension period, which is very bad news. Therefore, this scared investors, and that's why investors are selling off from this company, and for me personally, I do not own either of these companies in my portfolio. But those are the latest news updates that investors need to be aware of right now. So if you want more videos like this on the best stocks to buy and the latest stock market news updates, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now. Subscribe if you are new. Comment your thoughts down below about any or all of these stories, and with that being said, I will see you in the next YT video.